Everybody. Welcome back to the F Oxy Juice Podcast. I'm your host, Juice, and I'm here with my co-host, Reen. What's happening, Reen? Not much. What's up? Uh, not a lot. Not a lot. But uh, obviously, we got a big fight week ahead. And because of that, we decided to get a guest for tonight's show. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present you once again, Ashley. And you may know her as the MMA nerd. What's going on, Ash? Not much. Happy to be here. Surviving a snowstorm at the moment. So, yeah, it's a good night. <laughs> Damn. See, we're, we're only going to – supposed to, well, at least down here in SoCal, we're supposed to get a little rain. It's been cold, and by cold, I mean 56 degrees. So I'm sure I wouldn't like to trade places with you. Not even a little. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, fingers crossed and prayers and thoughts that, uh, that this doesn't go under for you, Ash, and uh, we're going to try and get this shit moving so we can get this show on a roll. So, um uh no mma to cover basically this whole year so this is going to be our first event so no review we're just going to do a preview uh we talked about some of the fights last week only um, like two or three of them but we're going to talk about mostly the main card here so let's jump straight into it And I'm only omitting one fight from here cuz I don't the more the more screen fight I don't know I don't think it's really commanding of so much attention but we're going to cover all the other all the other main card fights uh quick question for you ash uh i i'm sorry i have not heard your show yet i seen it earlier this morning but i have not heard it i have not had the time my apologies but i will but um we talked about this last week and I, if you've heard the show i think you know about me and reen's feelings but i must know who did you pick and what are you thinking about the uh macy barber roxanne Montefiore fight oh I'm nervous. <laughs> I, um, I I picked Macy and like emphatically pick her. I I love Roxy, but I would be so shocked if she even put Macy in trouble. And I know that's so mean, but I just I don't know. I just don't see where she really threatens her to be honest. So so yeah, don't hate me. <laughs> no no I I, I don't. Get juice mad at me. How uh, dare you! <laughs> Why be so nice, Juice? No, it's cool. We're big Just Roxy kidding. fans here, and it's, it's cool that uh, it's cool that Ashley's also a Roxy fan. I know, I know she is, but uh, yeah, it's it's more the the hatred of Macy that's strong here than it is the love for Roxy. So, I think I think I think Reen and I are the only people online or whatever anybody that's really going for for uh, Roxy and, and um, I, I know, yeah, the other juice uh, from fighting with myself. And then I have another friend who's uh, coming back into the scene who actually does really think that Roxy can beat her too. And I like his word because he also predicted that Holly Holm would knock out Ronda when they first fought. So I tend to look at his opinion higher than others. So I hope we're all on the same page here, but yeah, that's going to be, a, I'm definitely going to DM you if that goes, that goes wrong. But yeah, uh <laughs> I will say, you are the original Macy Barber hater in my life because I think there's uh, a lot of us. I'm gonna There's show. a lot of you now, but when she was oh. first coming out and everyone's like, The future, you stood strong in your hatred. Because <laughs> I knew you her. I, <laughs> I I knew her before she came in the UFC and I was like, I kinda knew her shtick then. But I'm like, okay, she's she's gonna grow. She can be big, she cannot be but the more and more I see her, I'm just like, she's just not that good. She's not as good as people think. But, of course, that's just that's just my opinion. We're going to see on Saturday. We we can't really go on this show too much and not mention Macy. So, of course, I had to ask you about it. So. I figured uh, this out. <laughs> <laughs> but to move on to the, the fights that we're covering tonight, um, we'll start with the first card. The first fight on the main card of Diego Fajeda and Showtime Pettis. Uh, I'll start with you, Rain. What do you think about this fight? I already have Fajeda down. Like, come on. He's been on a roll. Five fight, win streak. He had three fights last year, I think. Just an insane year. He's just been slowly coming up ever since, what, he had issues with his, his weight. And, like, 
whatever drug issues. Yeah, we won't talk about that. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like Showtime is going back down to lightweight, so I don't know if that'll work out for him. And yeah, I like. Don't get me wrong, I like Showtime, but but hey, is a tough one. So yeah. yeah. I, what what was the turning point with you? Was it the the Kabbalah fight? Yes. Yeah, I remember we were talking about that fight a lot when it happened because we're. Not a lot of people were talking about it. And then when it happened, like, I still don't think he got enough recognition. Like, dude, he just beat the shit out of a, a Sambo Russian champion at his own fucking game. Yeah, he's a he's a dog, man. So I don't know if it's going to end well for Pettis. Like, I hate this matchup for him. It, it is tough. And, and I think uh, last I heard that Pettis is an underdog, which I, I guess now he is. Um, Pajeda is getting the respect he deserves. People actually knowing who he is. So. Yeah, it, it's so weird too. Like, is he get a little emotional because he's talking about this whole lawsuit with Wasada too? It's so strange, man. Like now it's coming out. You know what? I think um, well, we were gonna mention that in the in the news segment, but yeah, I mean, we can elaborate on that a little bit too because it is a weird thing. He didn't even say. Is there any details to what happened? All I know is that they were coming to collect piss from him, and he got his hand cut open. Then, like. What it seems like there's a big piece of the story missing. Like, how do you go from pissing this bottle to getting his hand jacked up that he even requires stitches? I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, it could have been stitched up, or they it could have been glued. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, or you know, Duke wanted to call up the fight. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> What, yeah, Ash, what, what did you think about this? I'm sure you've seen this story. What What did you think with, with the whole Usada thing? I don't know what to think with this kid. To be, I mean, one, I don't even understand how, understand how it, happened. it happened. Like Kind of like what you were saying. It's like, how did that... Was there a chip on the jar, maybe? Or something? I don't know. It's weird. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the containers they pee into look like. but <laughs> So just, it's a weird story anyway. And then the fact he's bringing it up now is weird and it's just i yeah i don't know i have a hard time knowing how to how to read this one because it's just such a weird story and the timing's so odd but i don't know it does worry me a little bit that he's all like worked up about that and talking about that going into a fight but i don't know yeah, I don't, I don't have a reason to not believe him. It is just, yeah, very, very strange timing. Like, it has nothing to do with this fight, you know? Exactly. It, yeah, <laughs> but um, me personally, I think... So, okay, Rain, I got you down for, for Fajeda, obviously. Uh, me personally, yeah, I, I got to go with Fajeda, too. I kind of just going to mirror everything you said, the Kabbalah performance, uh, mm. the doubting him so, so long, and him just continuing to to exceed expectations and then the fact that i don't think a lot of people are talking about a a gym that was really been coming up this year that i don't think gets their due credit he's with fortis mma and he's been with them for a while that's the one gym that i'm looking at that i I really think is going to have some some real some real contenders soon i mean they already have jeff neal and obviously he he came up like a fucking rocket uh, this past year uh, Macy Chasson, I know she uh, she didn't win her last fight, but she's still a prospect in my eyes. I think they got a lot of good fighters. And I think Fajeda's been holding it down there for a while. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick Fajeda in this one, too. Uh, I don't think it'll be a finish, but I think it'll be a, probably a, a 29-28, 30-27 decision. Um, how about you, Ash? I'm going with him as well. He's been on such a roll, and he's just been proving himself, proving his heart, and coming through. Whereas Pettis, he's been going back and forth with wins and losses since like 2016 or something. Like he just can't string together. He can't even string together a losing streak. (laughs) He is so all over the place and going back down to 155 and then all this USADA stuff. And then just, I don't know, I can't trust Pettis enough to pick him and I can trust Carlos enough, though, to pick up this win. So I'm going with him as well. You know what's funny about what you just said, that you can't even trust him to be consistent in wins or losses? What's crazy about that, I just thought about it when you said it, is that when Pettis wins, he wins spectacularly. And <laughs> this wasn't always the case, but lately when he's losing, he's losing spectacularly too. 
That's true. <laughs> One way or the other. Like but before, he liked it. Like when he was young and he came in the UFC, like okay, he had a lot of knockouts. You know, we know that he was a finisher, and if he lost, it was probably like a boring wrestling 30-27 decision. But lately, it's like he's getting shut out. Or he's getting damn near finished. Like the, you know, Nate Diaz fight, it was kind of both. He almost got finished and he got shut out. And then, you know, like the Max Holloway fight, he he was one of his first times he'd been knocked out. Like mm-hmm. he's, he's, and then like another win, like with Chiesa, he submitted him when nobody thought he could have got submitted. Like it's, it's pretty crazy. He's the, the highs are the highest and the lows are the lowest. So like the Wonder Boy fight is like Pettis' career. Just losing, 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 and mm-hmm. then brilliance. Just pure brilliance. Bam. <laughs> and that's it. But that does not a trustworthy fighter make. <laughs> Fun, but not trustworthy. Well said. Next fight. I'm psyched for this one. I've kind of been psyched for it since it got announced. Claudia Gadelia and Alexa Grasso. This is a fight that I don't think has ever been booked, but it's definitely a fight that I've been looking forward to ever since I've seen him in Invicta, like, five, six years ago, uh, basically as soon as the, the division opened up, I knew that they would meet at one point, and it's finally happening. This is a fight where I think uh, when, when it happened in there, they're, they're, they're both young, and I'm going to say that they both are in their prime, but Gedalia, I don't know if it's the weight cuts or just the miles she had or, or overtraining. I don't know what her issues have been, but now it's Break not up. given. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Reen. No, don't Sorry. worry. Don't got, worry. You'll have your turn. You'll I have got your Tourette's turn. right now. You'll have your turn right now. And I, I will not. I, I will let you go unfiltered. Don't you worry. But, um, yeah, uh, I don't know what her issue has been, but she's definitely, I mean, I think she's facing some really good girls. And Grasso is a, a great fighter, but I think stylistically this it shouldn't benefit her. But given the streak that Grasso's been on, even with the Sparza fight having the, the draw and stuff and how good she's been looking even in uh, in a controversial uh, loss to uh, to Esparza, I, I think she can do it. So I, I guess I'm starting here and I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick Grasso. Uh, Ash, what do you think about this one? Oh, I really like this fight too. I think it's a perfect fight for both of them and where they're at. And I can't I thought Claudia's last fight it gave me a little more, a little more hope that my, she might be able to come back a little bit more, just because she's been so back and forth too with her career, and I went back and forth on this one a bit, just because I think Grasso on the feet obviously could run away with it, but I just have a hard time. I, I would be shocked if Claudia couldn't get her down and keep her down, so I'm. I'm leaning Claudia and just hoping that we get like old girl back where she can wrestle and string together a good game plan like that. So I'm hoping and picking Claudia, but I mean, I say that like, I want to be happy for Grasso if she won, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying. I think and hope that we get the old Claudia back and she, she gets the win. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of with you there too, that uh, although I am going with Grasso and I do want Grasso to win, I'm not at all going to be mad if Gadelia comes back in tip-top shape and, and dominates Grasso. Because, yeah, I've been, I've been waiting for that Gadelia for a while. We saw, like, two or three fights of hers in the UFC where she looked badass. And everything else has been kind of eh or not that, you know, her losing, not that impressive. So, yeah, I'm kind of with you there. I hope, I hope we see the old one back. But if she loses, I ain't going to be sad either. Reen, the floor is yours. <laughs> oh man all right so to start off i heard her talking claudia talking about how she's getting her shit together and uh yeah she said she did admit that she's had some problems in the past so she's back where she originally started with her old gym so hopefully yeah she has a better game plan coming in this time you know instead of doing whatever she was doing in the past um anyways <laughs> i'm trying to be so fucking nice man uh because i mean seriously like one of the fights she didn't really she wasn't on there i don't think um that was that nina fight the the ronda fight that one was questionable for me because i mean 
it's Ronda Marcos. She, yeah, she's been looking good, but at the same time, it's like there is nothing from Claudia. There's really not much action coming from Claudia. So I wonder what's going to happen here if they keep it standing. Of course, yeah, she has the black belt in jiu-jitsu, wrestling and whatnot, but we didn't really see that with Ronda. So I wonder how she's going to put a win together against uh, Hungry Alexa Grasso. I mean, her boxing is really good, so... Yeah, I'm trying to be nice. But yeah, my pick is Alexa. Yeah, and how dope would this be uh, for her team? Because Aldana's obviously coming off of that big KO win of, of Kellen Vieira last month. If Grasso can beat Gadelia, especially emphatically like that, imagine the the pop that those girls, that gym, Mexico is going to get. Mm-hmm. It, it'd be gigantic. And obviously, I'm kind of speaking for, for my peeps here, but... Yeah, the Grosso and Aldana are kind of the only Mexicans I root for anyway. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely psyched for this one. Wow. A lot of pressure on Claudia, it seems like, because she's this, you know, Alexa's the, the young prospect coming up, and Claudia has been looking good, so. Yeah. And that was always that was always the title bestowed on Gedalia. She was mm-hmm. always the young prospect, because, yeah, I mean, early in her career, I remember when she first came in the UFC, I thought she was, and I know it probably sounds silly now, but I thought she was as talented as Aldo. Like I saw all the same characteristics. She's strong. She's got she's got solid striking, great wrestling. Obviously, her jujitsu is amazing. Like she was the I thought she was the most well-rounded female maybe in the sport. And then I, I knew she was gonna have cardio issues. I just did not think they were gonna be so pronounced. And then you see her losses, and it's like, damn. Basically, if you can get out of the first round, you're kind of good. Crazy how, like, she fell apart. Because that's all she really needed to fix, I thought, was just her cardio. Remember how close she was to beating... Well, a lot of people think she bought, she beat Joanna in the first fight. Right. And in right. the second fight, she was so close to beating her. And then she just, just gassed. Oh. Changed her life, man. You, you said she went back to her old team. So does that mean she's with Nova Unyao, with, with Pedaneras back I, I in guess, Brazil? I guess so, because she's like, yeah, I'm back at home. Hmm. And home's not... The yeah, states. That, that would imply Brazil, yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, yeah, that, that was one that slipped by me, but I don't know, Pedaneras is good. But then again, like I just said about Aldana, Kellen Vieira was uh, also from Pedaneras camp. So let's see if he can do better with, with Gadelia, his his former student, than he could with her. Let's see. Co-main event time. Ooh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, you know, Ashley, I got to give you a problem. You're, you're the one that... Uh, you know, asked to to be on here. I've I've wanted you back on for a while, but you said this day specifically because obviously Connor is a big fight. But I totally overlooked the fight the fact that Home was fighting on this card. So um, I, I'm actually gonna just give you first reign here. I'm not even gonna introduce it or nothing. Just I know you're a home <laughs> fan and kind of know where I think this is where where it's gonna go. But I, I want to hear what you're gonna say. Okay, my pick is obvious because I always pick her, but. I feel like I'm like way more level-headed with this fight than I have been with other Holly Holm fights. <laughs> and it's kind of easy though, because I love both these girls, but you can't, like, they haven't really changed much since their first fight. So I don't really expect it to go much differently than the first fight. Because if anything, Rocky would probably have like the wrestling advantage and stuff, but that didn't really work out for to in the first fight. And Holly's, in, that's like the one area where she's actually shown some growth. And uh, so it's like I don't really see Raquel being able to exploit that. So I kind of think it's just going to be a repeat of the first one, but maybe a little bit more boring. And I think, I think Holly will take it, <laughs> obviously. But I actually believe it. It's not like just me being biased and picking automatically. I actually think she'll get this one with point fighting, but we'll see. Gotcha. Fair enough. All right. Now on the total opposite end of the spectrum, Rain, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> uh, don't, I don't, mean, don't. What, is it, what does it matter if she wins or loses? It doesn't. She getting a title shot anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly, exactly my point, right? I, this this fight doesn't make sense at all. I don't know why it's even here again. Because, I mean, this was rebooked. Um, That's right. Yeah, you think of anything, they would have been like, you know what, we tried, fuck it, let's give them someone else. No, yeah. I think it's because they just don't, like, care about them right now. So they're like, you two can fight each other. 
get out of our way for a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah, neither Just of them stay be busy again anytime soon. So it's kind of like play with each other while we figure the other stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, I don't think much will change. If anything, Rocky would do what you know what Amanda did to to GDR and just take her down and just maul her all night. If she could just do that, then hopefully she can edge and win out. But if she keeps it standing, then who knows? Like you said, point fighting. But she'll be more active. Hollow will be more active. She'll be bouncing around. She'll be shushing. No, <laughs> I mean she'll be predictable as usual. But it's like it's the same shit. It's the same routine. Just, you know, don't let her set up her fucking kicks. You know, just look for that head kick. Like, I, nothing's really changed with her. And unfortunately, Rocky, too. I love Rocky, though. But, yeah, just don't let her set anything up. And then just take her down. That's all she can do, really. So, so who are you going for in this one? Who, who's Chip. Your pick? I have Pennington, of course. Because <laughs> it doesn't make sense, man. Like, come on, Holly. Can you you too. I would. I wish Rocky would just retire her, you but it's not going to happen. You two are saying exactly the same thing, but just came to different conclusions. It's the weirdest shit. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's just totally flipped. <laughs> just for the hell of it. No, and but you know what? Wh- whatever it may be, I, I obviously I respect the picks, but uh, good points brought up. I, either way, yeah, the, kind of a, a weird, somewhat meaningless fight. A uh, good point, Ash, that it is kind of like a stay busy fight while they figure stuff out. And then, of course, yeah, the, the title shot thing is always going to be brought in. And, um, man, I got to say, I don't I, – I, I am actually a home fan. I, I think that's kind of evident because I'm the one that's always got to be telling Rain to be a little nicer and stuff. But I, I'm still <laughs> – Kind of, kind of. <laughs> but – She's I'm, getting laid. <laughs> Well, I hope I, you heard it. I hope so too. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope Come on, so Holly. I hope you're like <laughs> get ran on. Sorry. <laughs> you need it. <laughs> Be unpredictable for once. Damn. <laughs> That's literally all she has to do. It's just yeah. not do the same exact thing and the mix it up a little. And don't fun. like do her <laughs> thing before she kicks. And she could win a lot more fights, I feel. <laughs> the funny thing is that um, Pennington is a, is a... I think she has gone better, and I think her wrestling is very underrated. I think she could do what, what Reen said of kind of uh, grounding her and mauling her and shit. And um, Holly also has a... I don't want to say she has underrated takedown defense, but she has, a, she has one go-to, but it's a very good go-to of uh, posting and always trying to get on the clinch and... Uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of expecting a lot of the the same of the first fight. Hopefully not as boring or boring as you said, Ash. But the thing is, Pennington is is kind of you know she's kind of inconsistent because it really depends on the fighter. It just depends on whether they're going to engage her or not. If they are, she's probably going to win. She's most likely going to win. But Holly Holm's never going to engage anybody. So they could. I literally think they could fight a hundred times. And Holly Holm will win every single time because she's never going to change course. And neither is Rocky. So they're just going to be stuck in this weird stalemate where she's going to keep on trying to brawl with her. (laughs) What happened? Stubborn. Yeah, they're too stubborn. Yeah, yeah, both of them. Yep. One's one's way too timid and the other one's way too aggressive. And it just doesn't work out in a weird way. You think that would cause for fireworks, but nope. It just doesn't work that way. So there's just no chemistry there. No chemistry. But, um, yeah, so having said all that, obviously I'm going to go with home because, like I said, the numbers, I think just the math doesn't add up. Holly home plus Rocky Peddington equals Holly home, uh, I think. So, yeah, I think that's how it's going to go down. And I was there for the first fight. My first ever UFC fight was uh, Rousey versus Ngano, and that was the co-main event. And to this day, I'm still perplexed why people thought that Peddington won that fight. I do, I do not get it what, whatsoever. I, I'm still trying to figure out how that happened. I understand that she kind of got dropped in the last round, which was more of a slip. I can understand why you kind of gave her that round, although it's not a good decision. But everything else, I just thought she just got outstruck and outpointed. I didn't see anything for me to 
believe that Rocky did anything in that fight. But yeah, I again, it's probably just going to go the same way. So, so that's that. So time for the main event. Conor McGregor is returning after 15 months. Uh, several assault claims, including of the sexual variety, uh, all kinds of stuff. Cowboys, what coming off of his loss. To just engage you a few months ago. And... <laughs> Rain, you're gonna oh, you're gonna sorry. comment you're sorry. gonna comment on this fight. No, you're gonna start. Here's the thing. <laughs> so that's the fight. It's uh I'll say this about the fight and I'm gonna lead I'm gonna let Rain start here, but I'll say this about the fight. I am glad that obviously it's Connor, so he's the biggest star in the sport, but I am glad that it's a non-title fight. They just put a non-title fight in there. Five rounds, fuck it. Every, people are going to pay for it, so let them have it, even if it is going to be an extra $5. But, uh, Rain, I, I want your analysis now. What, Brokeback Mountain 2? Part 2? Brokeback Mountain? Part 2? All, all, the, all the... Yeah. The real it's so premises. awkward. Yes, it's so weird, man. I was going to, like, tweet something last night after I watched the press conference, like, this hamster sucking off, you know, the water spigot. Because <laughs> that's what it seemed like they were doing. They were, like, awfully friendly with each other. It was so weird, man. I don't know what to think of this fight. And then the pressers, man. The people, like, they couldn't even ask the right questions or any question for that matter, really. This whole thing is just so weird to me. Like, it doesn't seem like we have a fight coming up. Yeah, no, the buildup has been horrible. It's been yeah. so off. And, yeah, that presser, I couldn't even make it through the whole thing. It was so awkward. <laughs> and just, you couldn't even see Cowboy's face. It was just yes! so <laughs> like, Right? I, I don't know. I prefer drunk Connor. <laughs> like, murmur, murmur, murmur. Wow. <laughs> I said it. I but, said it. <laughs> no, it's fun. See, you're saying it about an athlete. I've actually said that about people I know. I know people who've gone sober. <laughs> I'm like, shit, I liked you better when you were a drug addict, man. At least you were funny. <laughs> so I'm the worst person here, so I get you. No, it's true, though. It's so weird. And then even, like, the press people were saying, like, oh, we're all here because of you, Connor, and we're making all this money. And, that and, that. Was... and I'm like... Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was the one where I was like, that was the one where I'm like, I kept watching, but I'm like, why? Why? That was the, that bothered me way more than Cowboy, than Dana saying his shit. I'm just like, what the fuck? Are we, like, are we, is this like a fucking, I, I was like rolling out the red carpet for Connor? What the fuck, dude? Yeah, and just Connor's just eating it all up. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, thank you. Yep, uh huh. <laughs> it's so weird, man so weird I, I don't know what to think i i didn't really care for the fight now that it's here i want to know what the outcome is because now i really want cowboy to win but at the same time like i don't even like the way cowboy's acting it's so strange it, it, he's just so complimentary of like connor this guy's a man you know this and that yeah he's coming up yeah don't don't talk about those allegations you know totally backing him up like it's so weird it was weird. It was like he like felt indebted to him for yeah. giving him the honor of fighting him. It's like where's the cowboy that was like talking all that shit to him at the presser way back that started all this? Yeah, it's just I wanted like a little. I I like respectful pressers. Don't get me wrong, but it felt so. It just it felt it didn't even feel like respectful as much as it did like kind of icky, you know. Yeah. Yeah, kind of staged almost. Yeah, and I think I could have gotten over it if, like, like you said, that media guy, and just like it, just it was too much. If it was just cowboy, I'd get over it because it's whatever. He's a dad now, so he's so respectful. But <laughs> I don't know. It just the way Dana got with Connor and the way the media guys all were with him. It was just too much weirdness. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Man, I'm always looking forward to, like, a Conor McGregor ass-whooping. I mean, I, I even went for Khabib last time. But this, I don't know. You think this is harder to pick than Khabib and Conor? Yeah, man. 
Because that fight was basically 50 50 <laughs> across the board. And uh, really? I think this one's, yeah, like if you looked at the, well, I think uh, I think Khabib was like a slight favorite, like very slight. But obviously we saw how that fight turned out. But having known that, I mean, Cowboy is not the same type of fighter as Khabib. And people are still kind of like 50 50 on this one. I think especially now after fight week. Fight week. I mean, he's. He's been fighting too much. That's just insane. All the back-to-back fights. And now he's fighting Connor on this platform. Hella nice. Seems like he's having a good time, too. I don't know if you guys watch, like, the embedded stuff. Mm-hmm. They're, they have, like, they're having, like, a Wonder Twin ring power activate thing because of PETA. PETA's not going after both of them. So, you yeah. know, now they're even more close, like, fucking trading coats and shit and shoes. You know, cowboy with his motorcycles. I think, I think McGregor had like a DJ, a mobile DJ and shit. <laughs> and the Performance Institute okay. when he was training. <laughs> That's why I text you, Juice. I'm like, he got a mobile DJ. Yeah, I, I seen it. I haven't seen all the embedded, <laughs> but I saw that much. I'm like, holy shit, man! I saw and Dylan I... Dennis there too. I'm like, damn, you're gonna let Dylan Dennis in the fucking Performance Institute? Institute? All right, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere he went, like even fighters were stopping to take pictures, of, you know, with Connor. Yeah, it's, it's that so was weird, so man. Yeah. yeah, such a weird scene right now, man. Maybe because I don't know, you know, I'm not a casual or anything. This is like you're a respected hardcore, like casual package right here, man. UFC 246, like the casual edition, the casual package. So what do you think? Having said all that, what's the verdict? Who's, who's winning? Shit, I don't know, man. Cowboy is a slow starter, and I don't even know now. <laughs> He's respecting him way too much. So I don't even know. Fucking Chilling's behind him, so hopefully he like, smacks him around before he gets out there. I wouldn't be surprised if Cowboy knocked out Schilling a few times in, in sparring already, because we've seen how Schilling's been coming out lately. Yeah, god damn it. I love mm-hmm. that guy, but fuck, man. CP and lung cancer. Mm-hmm. Not a good combo. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? I'm going with Cowboy. I mean, I uh, gotta still ride with Cowboy because fuck Connor. Gotcha. Good and good enough reason. Ash, your turn. What do you think? Um, I think. I mean, I see ways Cowboy can win for sure. I just don't see them happening, and it's like. I've been swayed a couple times since the fight got announced to where I'm like, you know, maybe Cowboy will take this. But in the day, I just, there's no, I just cannot see it happening. I think Connor, I could see him finishing him. If it went to a decision, I'd be shocked. But I could see, I would see him winning the decision too. I just don't, because the last fight with Habib even, it's Connor, of course, he got, but physically, he is in good shape, and you could tell that there were some things he had worked on. It was just, yeah, it was just too much other stuff he had going on, apparently. But I don't know. I just think Connor seems very focused. He seems to be in great shape. And, well, and then the fact that Cowboy's, like, limping around and trying to, like, play it off with this, the worst poker face I've ever, oh, I stepped on a Lego. Like, really? <laughs> So I don't know. I just, I have a, I can't pick Cowboy as much as I would want to. But, and then there's a part of me too that's like, if Connor wins, obviously I don't want the Habib fight, but the Jorge fight would be really cool. Whereas if Cowboy wins, I just, it really doesn't do much for him except give him a bunch of money because he isn't getting a title shot. He's not going to fight Jorge. It's like, so I don't know. I, I just, I got to go Connor. Makes me feel dirty now, though. I don't know. <laughs> you're you're going for Connor because he's like he's an evil but a necessary evil kind of thing. Yes, and I hate it. <laughs> Just it makes me feel like that media guy. Like, oh, thanks for all the clicks, Connor. <laughs> it's like it's so annoying, but it's true. Like my podcast, it's barely been up, and it already has like just in comparison to like being up for a day with other pay per views last year. And it already had so many more clicks and stuff. And it, I really, it's the Connor effect. Mm-hmm. It's real and it's annoying, but it's very real. Yeah, I think our biggest, uh, I think our biggest podcast here too 
it was obviously we've only been on for like a year. I think it was when we were talking about the sexual assault allegations. And I, if I remember correctly, I think the episode was Connor. Have you ever get your shit pushed in? And it was a, I put for the thumbprint the picture of uh, Connor's mugshot, and that's been by far like at least twice as big as almost all our other episodes. And that was yeah, just was talking good. about <laughs> sexual allegations. Yeah, yeah. But thanks for the segue, uh, Ash, about that that goddamn reporter. I I did not get his name, and I don't know if I wanted or not. But fuck that guy so much, man. People talk about Ariel Hawani being a fucking shill, and and um, I think those criticisms are deserved, especially with how you know how significant and how visible he is in the in the sports sphere, in the MMA sphere, in the reporting sphere. But that guy, whoever he was, like that's not your job, man. That's not your job to suck up to Dana, to fighters to Shelby to any of those guys you're there to report the truth and and challenge them and that was the that was the ickiest thing of the whole thing I understand what what you girls were saying about the the camaraderie between Cowboy and Connor and 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 Dana saying his shit and all that but the fact that that guy said what he said and got like applauded and cheered and everyone was like yeah cool cool bro thank you thank you and the one dude asked him, like, oh, what about these sexual assault allegations? And he booed the fuck out of him. I hadn't seen the, the conference till today. I saw that, you know, I kept seeing, the, oh, the guy got booed, the guy got booed. But I thought it was like, maybe three, four drunk people in the back. It was like the whole goddamn arena. It, it was so pathetic. And I'm just like, it, it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. It's like, okay, yeah, you, you want real journalism, but you boo this guy. And then this guy sucking up to Connor and Dana and all these guys. Oh, yeah, that guy's cool. Fuck that shit, man. But anyway, aside from that, nothing to do with the fight. But um, when this fight was announced, I I just I thought it was a gimme for Connor. Um, I don't necessarily feel that now, although I do think he will win. I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to fully go Connor because uh, Cowboy, I, I have not seen this whole limping thing. Maybe I'm not just not paying enough attention, um, and and who knows? It can be something. It can be nothing. But I think uh, Connor has. He's always just going to be a bad stylistic matchup for for Cowboy. And although Cowboy is dangerous, he always will be. I don't think he's going to present too many. There, there's not going to be a lot of opportunities that present themselves for him to capitalize. And yeah, just the whole thing of him being a slow starter and Connor being a fast one, you, you can't overlook that fact. I, 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 but I really want to give Cowboy a shot, not just for his skill, but also the fact that they are being friendly. Those are the fights that Cowboy shines in. When you're, when you're cool with them, that's when he's the most dangerous. So I don't know what, what Connor's going at here, why he's being so nice. He should definitely be egging him on, but I, I don't know. I don't know if it is having to do with that he's not drinking anymore or the he doesn't want to start too much shit because of the, the allegations running around, you know, running around him. I, I don't know what it is, but putting the fight just justified by itself without all the media bullshit, without all the press and all that stuff, I still think Connor's a bad style matchup, and I do think that he will, he will beat Cerrone probably – second round TKO. So yeah, I've got Connor in that one. So that does it for the preview. So let's get into some headlines. And first up, Robert Whitaker is out of his uh, UFC 248 fight with Jared Cannonier for undisclosed reasons. He just said, uh, just said personal reasons. Who knows what it is? Uh, I see a lot of fate, hate for Whitaker right now because he's always pulling out of fights. But I'm I'm just of the opinion, whatever it is, if it's for personal reasons, it, it's got to be pretty big because Whitaker does not look like a soft man. So, um, Reen, I guess I'll let you take the lead here because I know Whitaker's a, a crush of yours. He's saving koalas and wallabies. Is that is that what it is? Yes. Oh, is he really? I don't know, but I'm trying to protect you. 
I would have thought that completely. Like, oh. I had you for a minute. I had you for a second. Uh, that's what I uh, That's what I want to believe because this is fucked up, man. I was looking forward to this fight. So, I mean, hopefully nothing too bad is going on, you know, with this family if, if it's a family issue. But there's a lot of shit going on in Australia. So, I don't know, man. It sucks that he got he had to pull out and all this negativity is hitting him now again. But I, what can you do? I swear I almost forgot about the fires. How the fuck I forgot, I don't know. But now that you're saying that, like, obviously there's the, the factor that, yeah, maybe he's near one of these fires because they're all over the goddamn country. Obviously it could be something with his family and or who knows, maybe his mom or his in-laws were affected by the fires and... You know, they're taking them in or trying to find shelter for them or something. Yeah, that yeah, that's a that's a good point. The the fire stuff is, is not not a joke. So hopefully these things get start go, going down, these goddamn fires. And hopefully it has nothing to do with that. Hopefully it's something that he can come back to soon. Uh and hopefully nothing too devastating. But yeah, good good point there. I know you're covering for your man. If I was a Whitaker's wife, I'd I'd be I'd be looking out for you because uh, you're gonna go down for that boy for anything. <laughs> That's just me. Hope you're listening. I think you're saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Fuck it, Reed. Okay, <laughs> Ash, what, what were your thoughts on this? Uh, I'm sad. I really that fight is a really fun, intriguing matchup. Um. There's a little part of me, though, that's kind of okay with it because it's, it was a really quick turnaround after getting knocked out like that. So it'd be cool if they could reschedule it for, like, the summer maybe. I don't know, depending on what he's going through. So it's like, well, I'm bummed, and I'm especially bummed that people are turning on him all harshly. Yeah. But overall, for his health, I think it might not be the worst thing. I, I was hair, I was just like a hair step away from turning on him too. So I was like, he had that Cain Velasquez effect. But I'm like, man, fuck this guy. He's always getting hurt. But personal reasons, hey man, like I said, I, I, he's he's not a soft man. I do not think he's gonna pull out for personal reasons. If it's something just because, you know, he's having a tough time with his wife or something. I'm sure it's something drastic. And I just hope it's not anything too too bad. And that is a good point about the the KO. I mean. It, it it wasn't that long ago. And on the flip side, Cannoneer has been on a roll and he's just knocking bitches out. So that, that does not spell good things. And even when I first heard of the fight, I'm like, this is probably not going to end well for Whitaker anyway. So is it, if it gives them a chance to be in better shape and yeah, for them to do it later on, that'd be cool. Last I heard, they were looking for a replacement for Cannoneer, but I don't know too many people that are going to be knocking on Dana's door and saying, <laughs> let me get Cannon here. Is there anyone right? that, that you, you you girls can think that will actually take that fight? Hell no, that's too dangerous, man. No, <laughs> I don't see it. And and Cannon here is a top contender. I mean, you should take that fight, but he's fucking scary as shit. He is very scary. He's on a roll. So, yeah, I don't see anybody, like, wanting to step up to that plate. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that'd be rough. Unless they, Unless they match him up with Costa. Well, yeah, so we're we're, we're gonna touch on him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, both of those things we're gonna touch on now. So I get, yeah, you kind of let the cat out of the bag, uh, Ash. So yeah, let's talk about All that. Right. This was no, no, no. That's not a bad thing. So <laughs> let's touch on that. I'm I'm down with segues. Uh, Fabricio Verdum is a. Uh, yeah, he's uh probably listening to six nine right now. He's has no problem listening to to snitches. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been snitching, man. Uh, it came out today that he got a tenth month a ten month reduction off his twenty four month sentence from USADA for uh, pro- providing substantial assistance. Assistance is what I read correctly. I, I don't even know what to say about. I, don't, I really don't know. I, I guess I'll, I'll let you girls go on this one free for all because, man, I, I'm I'm actually kind of sad. I haven't been a fan of Verdum for a while. I, I've kind of turned on him for kind of like when he lost to Miosic. I kind of realized that he wasn't all that. But <laughs> he did throw a boomerang at Kobe Covington, and that's still one of the funniest <laughs> fucking things I've ever seen in MMA, and that kind of won me over again. But, man, th- this... 
I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I guess you can start. It sounded like you had something to say. Well, I was wondering, like, how they got him to 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 be a rat. Because he was like, initially, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to be a snitch. Fuck that. And then now you're you're hearing this shit? Like, what's up? Like, what happened to you? You're running out of money or they're just dangling that reduced sentence and you're like, oh, fuck it. They're going to forgive me. I've been out of the game for a while. I'll take this. I just don't get why he wasn't going to Dana. Like, Dana seems like he probably would have accommodated him if he was asking for his release. I mean, look at Barnett, Frank Mir. It happens a lot with the heavyweights, too, especially because they're older. Verdum's not going to win a title anytime soon. And it's not like he has a gigantic fan base. Like, I thought he'd just be like, look, I'm, I'm either retiring, I'm, I'm done. If you really are done with it, I'm done. Or I just don't want to fight. He's talked so much shit about Osada for a long time. I thought it was just my look. I don't want to deal with these fuckers anymore. I'd rather just have you let you know, have you let me go. But yeah, it seems like the, this was pretty quick. I think this only happened like a year ago. So yeah, this is pretty quick that he he changed his mind all of a sudden. Um, how 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 about you, Ash? It's definitely weird, and I don't know. It's it's one of those where it's like I just I hate how we only get to find out half the story all the time with you saw this stuff. It's like, I want to know who he snitched on. <laughs> I want to know what this evidence was that was so great, you cut his sentence down. And, <laughs> like, and when is he going to be back now? Right? Is there right. a hotline? Is there, like, a whistleblower <laughs> hotline and shit? Like, Verdum called in. <laughs> Late or he, yeah, or he got, like, an agent on speed dial or some shit. Like, how does this all work out? It's like, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's weird i don't get it you know the other thing is too like i'm <laughs> i'm I maybe looking too much into this because usada is not this big government agency it's not the fbi it's not the irs or some shit but y- usually if we're talking in like legal terms with uh entities like that you can't just like get preferential treatment or immunity or something if you just rat people out you got to have some kind of proof usually like okay I'll, I'll give up this this and this person but you got to reduce my sentence but they gotta you you gotta find something on them you can't just give people's names and 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 give them sentence and i wonder if that's what's happening if that's just the thing that fighters have figured out like hey if you just give names or a gym or just just any any random name ever whether they've ever done it or not that's enough for them to say like, oh, okay, well, you're being a good boy or a good girl. So here's a six months, 10 months, a year off your sentence. But, you know, like you said, Ash, maybe, you surprise me, man. If it's just that, that just give us names. Doesn't matter whether they did shit or not. Yeah, it would have surprised me. That's so fucking bad. Like at that point, you're just wasting money because if you're just testing people and you don't catch anybody. <laughs> well, the whole you know? system is a waste of money in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't really say. I I can't really argue with you there. That is a good point. That is Wouldn't a good point. Would be funny if John Jones all of a sudden gets injured or something. <laughs> like my conspiracy hat would go on so fast, it would not even be funny. <laughs> oh my god, I can only imagine Reen texting <laughs> me that day. So I should have you know those for doom. <laughs> I'll yeah. be texting you too if that happens. <laughs> yeah. And his fight's what three, four weeks away. I mean, it's right around the corner. He's That's the next real soon. Yeah, and, and we know how John Jones fight reported, weeks are. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but it's like even if he got reported, they would still like move him to a city where he could fight still <laughs> and get away with it. Just move the pay per view because it's John Jones. It's... Repre- representing okay. California to the fullest. I'm very proud of my. <laughs> Very proud of our athletic uh, commission, aren't we, Reen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and my city in particular. But speaking of USADA, um, this has been kind of an ongoing thing with uh, Jessica Penne. We did not mention on last week's show. It's um, not necessarily old news because new things keep popping up. But, yeah, there's this uh, this story with Jessica Penne and USADA. I think people probably forgot that um, that she had been flagged, and she's one. I think still the only UFC athlete that's been flagged for um, weird findings in her biological passport. 
which I guess is like one of the according to Usada, one of the telltale signs to know that you've been you've been doing something. And uh, she's been saying that that they really f- fucked her over and that her career is basically done and that she's gone broke trying to do this and she can't she doesn't have the time, energy, or money to continue on with this. Uh, I'm sure if you're listening to this, you've heard at least something about this, but that's basically what's happened. And Usada is saying that most of what she's saying is false, that what they found was kind of irrefutable and that she's she's going to get punished. And it looks like four years now. What's your thoughts on this one, Ash? I think, again, it's just, it's so, it's so weird. And it makes me sad because you hear these cases. And I know uh, Sugar Sean was going through a really long case too. I think his is finally over though. So it's just, it's so weird because I don't know. It's like, it just, it doesn't seem fair that some are able to fight it more so than others. But then, and this one was confusing to me because it's like, I guess I was just hearing so many conflicting things on it because some people were saying it was like stuff with her hormones and like, like womanly stuff like that. But then I was hearing other people say that uh, she left a bunch of stuff out in her statement. So again, it's just one of those things I feel like I'm always getting like half the story with these things. And 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 to be fair from fighters too, you, it feels like you don't ever really get the whole truth. So it's, it's sad, but it's another one of those things too. It's like, I don't know. It's why I struggle with it. Like, is this the price we have to pay to have a clean sport? But then it's like, do we really believe it's a clean sport? Mm-hmm. You know? And it's hard to feel that way when it's like John Jones, we know, has like that little bit in there. But it's okay because he proved it. But then you got guys that are out for a tainted supplement for years. And it's like, and they couldn't prove that enough for you to let them off the hook. So I don't know. I'm very conflicted, <laughs> clearly. But I think a lot of people feel like that, that you only get half the story. And in this one, it's interesting because Jessica Penne has her side of the story. Usada has their side of the story. And yet it seems like we still don't know shit. You can't say like, oh, the truth is somewhere in the middle because at the end of the day, Penne is still being suspended for four years. doesn't matter what, what the truth is. It looks like Usada is the one winning here because she, she's the one that's getting punished for it. I mean, she had to start a GoFundMe for this shit, and I highly doubt she's going to get those $40,000 that she's asking for. And that's fucked up. She's been she's been Uber driving. I mean, whether she did it or not, it's like this seems like it's a real, real bad punishment. And, and I think her whole livelihood just got taken away. Yep. It's just gone. And that sucks. Yep. And then it's it's not just the thing that John Jones gets away with shit like that. It it's the fact that he's he he's uh, afforded the chance to get away with shit like that. Like he's been he's been punished. He hasn't. You know, there, it's kind of hit and miss. But even if he gets pu- punished, it's usually like a year, and that doesn't hurt him. He's got a bunch of money. I mean, obviously he's a very talented fighter, and he's one of the biggest draws. But still, I mean, he he can he can do this all day. And then look at even a guy like Josh Barnett, who's considered a legend by some and has been doing this forever how long did it take him to fight this shit and at the end of the day all they said was oh yeah my bad but at that point he'd already had him fought for like two or three years like it's ridiculous well what what about you Irene? yeah i don't know what's up with her, her story because it, it doesn't seem like she fought it until now right the contested paperwork, like, I guess mm-hmm. Wasada said that they just received it after she made her public statement, so I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I mean, 40000 to do tests and try to fight this? Like, is that really how much it costs? And oh, what yeah, the fuck a, are we expensive. doing? I mean, it's expensive. I mean, they, they, they seek out lawyers, and we all know lawyers are not cheap, and these things take a while. This is not just a thing of you're finding representation and like, oh, just say this, this, and that. You only got to go two or three times. Like, they drag it mm-hmm. on and on and on. And that was something I remember Barnett talking about, too. And, like, he had to pay for all, like, the testing to, like, prove mm-hmm. his own innocence. And those tests are really expensive just in themselves. So it's like that on top of attorneys and 
I imagine it just like keeps piling up like that. And John Jones, and I keep using him as an example because he's like the one guy, but it's like he's rich. Yep. So he probably is going through the due process, but he just can afford mm-hmm. it. For all these other fighters, they can't. So it sucks. <laughs> so crazy, man. The only thing I can think of is like, yeah, she fucked up. Something happened the first time. Why did she get her like her TUE or whatever? We don't know if she got it or not. But I, I, mean, I don't know if they could have helped her and kept like testing her and just making sure like she doesn't show up with other issues or whatnot because it just it it's like you're almost setting these people up for failure. You're not really helping them. I, in her case, it seemed like she was already in that pool, so she should have been monitored or something to avoid this like long drawn out suspension. And and on that subject, Rain, about the TUE, I mean, obviously you remember this, you know about this cyborg. With yeah. as much shit as people talk about her, she got a retroactive TUE. Now, to be fair, there was a lot of shady circumstances on right there, and I actually do not involve Cyborg in them because I blame George Lockhart and the UFC exclusively on this shit. But the point is still, the the, the UFC and or USADA gave her a TUE after, what was it, a diuretic that she used? Like, it's it's very... It's what I've always said about about um, USADA and drug testing in general because I had a bad feeling about them from the jump because I knew about the Mayweather Pacquiao stuff where they ba- gave him a TUE to use uh, an IV. I-, I see it like kind of like the immigration issue about the border and stuff like, oh, okay, you know, or is, is the wall or whatever you're going to do about that, is that the way to go about it? Probably not. But you need some kind of deterrent. Are people going to get around it? Of course they are. But you need some kind of symbol. And I think that's what USADA is. It's the border wall of of MMA. It's like, hey, we have a clean sport. See, you see this wall here? They can't get past it. But wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We all know they can. Yep, there's a way around it. You just got to play the game. So I don't know what happened with her. It's just, it's weird. It's really odd. That's what happened. (laughs) I know, right? At this point. Could have turned in. Like, there's a few suspect ones. <laughs> it's weird, right? Like, I just, I don't understand, like, why doesn't she get the same treatment? Something's up. Like, there's holes in her story. Just like her game. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Moving on from that. Um, some kind of weird no- news. And, um... I, I don't know if you girls know too much about Steven Espinoza, and uh, I'm sure you've at least heard something from him, especially because of Connor and stuff. But news came out this week that Steven Espinoza is now the de facto boss of Bellator because uh, he's with Viacom, and um, it's a Viacom CBS merger, and now he's the head of the fight stuff under that umbrella, which basically means he's Scott Coker's boss. And uh, Scott Coker still the CEO of Bellator. He's still in charge of that. But everything has to be rubber stamped by Steven Espinoza. So I wonder if, you know, Steven Espinoza being a boxing guy coming from Showtime, do, do you girls think that this will affect Bellator and or MMA in any way? And I'll let whoever goes first. Um, I'll go first because I need to clarify. Is that the guy that Connor was like, for the Showtime guy? Yeah, the you fucking weasel, that that okay. guy. Yeah. All right. So now he runs it all, basically? In a way. He's like uh, what, you know, like a producer. He's the one like, okay, yeah, do whatever you want, but you got to come to me. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah. all I know, well, um, I don't know if he had anything to do with Strike Force because I know he's been at Showtime for a while. So I don't, I'm, I'm assuming Scott Coker and him know each other to one one way or another. But that's what I'm wondering. Like, is this a thing where, like, oh, they know each other, they're not going to get in each other's way? Or since he's a boxing guy, he's going to try and shake things up a bit? Oof, that's hard to call because I could definitely see it going either way. Mm-hmm. It would be funny if he messed with Dylan Danis just to, like, get to Connor. <laughs> right. <laughs> is it weird that that's where my mind went with that? But I don't know. I, I feel like it, unless him and Coker have some hidden beef it would probably just go on as usual unless he comes up with something to 
challenge Dana's whole Zufa boxing. What what I do wonder is this is the only way I can kind of see it where it may it may have a factor in this. Uh, Clarissa Shields boxes for Showtime for Showtime boxing. So I wonder if he's gonna. I know she wants to fight Nunes and all that shit's been going on, but I wonder if he's gonna try and get her in uh, to the Bellator side and maybe. I don't. I don't know exactly the division. I think she's kind of a heavier girl. She's going to want to fight Julia Budd or Cyborg or Kat Zingano and try to get her in there somehow. That's the only thing I think of that. That can probably be a, a somewhat reasonable uh, guess that that something like that might happen. What about you, Irene? This is weird, man. So does that mean that Brendan Schaub has to be nice when he talks about Bellator? Oh, that's right. He he's not really a fan of that, huh? <laughs> yeah. I forgot That's about true. that. That's true. Yeah, because is he still on Showtime? I I thought I don't know. I forget. I thought he was just kind of a, a you had his YouTube channel, but he's still on Showtime. I think so. That all ties in with Showtime. I thought, and then he just signed like a, a extending contract with them. I thought. Damn. Yeah, that yeah. would not surprise me. That would be funny though. <laughs> right. That's gonna be interesting. So they're gonna be completely off the zone the the zone network then. That's over with. Um, I I did not read that. I did not because I think that the zone, the zone deal is in there for a few years, and by a few years I mean literally like maybe another year or two. I, I don't think it's that long, but yeah, that 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 could be a possibility. I mean, that's so odd, especially because that that's like Showtime is the last remaining force of of old school boxing. HBO is done. Um, the only other boxing we can get on tv is a uh, box the pbc stuff we get espn but most of those fights are on espn plus so that doesn't matter too much so yeah i do wonder if he's gonna try and get mma in there some way somehow because it's dying the only fighters that showtime has that i know of are clarissa shields and deontay wilder that's it i don't know any other fighters that are showtime boxing interesting yeah, so uh, I guess it's a wait and see thing because there's there's no way to really tell how this is gonna go. Uh, last headline: the UFC have just signed. Sorry for butchering this name. I'm sure I'll get it wrong. Jiri Prochaska. He is the uh, he was the rising 205 pound champion, and uh, he'd been on a bit of a roll. He'd been knocking bitches out for a good while, and um. He seems like a very exciting fighter. I haven't seen a full fight of his, but I've seen highlights. And um, it's interesting. It's interesting that they're getting more people in 205. I, they definitely need it. They always need it. But I, I wonder how far this guy will go. Yeah, he's like 26 and 3. Mm-hmm. Yeah, long, long fight record. All overseas, yeah. but yeah, impressive record. 27 years old. That's pretty good. It's exciting. John Jones needs people. And, like... I know everybody's high on a lot of them, but it's like these overblown <laughs> middleweights. They aren't going to do it. We need like some real 205ers. Because if you look at like just the division and like true 205ers, there's not many. So it'd be nice to, it'd be nice. I hope he comes in and like just kills it, makes a yeah. good run. Cause, yeah, because if you look at this year, because obviously he's fine, Dominic Ray is next month. Should he beat him? What? Corey Anderson and or Jan Blankovic, and he could theoretically fight both of them by year's end. And then what's left? Jacare. I don't know. Luke Rockhold. <laughs> nah, the, I don't think Rockhold's coming <laughs> back, man. I really I don't. Shouldn't. <laughs> I, I, I really don't. Yeah. If, and people forget how old he is, too. He's not exactly a, a spring chicken. That His chin is not going to get better. That's a... That's a Bad, bad. Yeah, he he needs to stay out for a while. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this uh this could be interesting. So yeah, I think I think that says it pretty well. John Jones needs bodies, and this guy seems like he's up to the task. So we'll see what happens with him. But on from the headlines, let's get straight to the matchup segment. And we have some breaking news. The uh, Easily the biggest matchup of this whole batch. Uh, Israel Adesanya is going to fight Yoel Romero at UFC 248. It will be the headliner. It's happening March 7th at uh, T-Mobile Arena. Um, that was the 
card that up until now had Joanna and Wiley Zhang as possibly the main event, but this is what they've been aiming for the whole time. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I guess I'll start with you, Ash. I don't know what happened with Costa because I never, I didn't get it from the jump of why they didn't go with him, and then they were going to go with him again, and now they went with Romero. So I'm sure you have some insight on that. <laughs> well, I thought he was injured originally, which is Five, why. Seven. I lot. Yeah, something like that. And then, and then my theory is that Verdum snitched on him this second time, <laughs> and. <laughs> And here we are. And it's like, I'm. it sucks because it's a good fight. Like, I'm happy to see the fight. But it kind of says where MMA is as a sport. And that kind of bums me out because there's no reason Yoel Romero should be getting the fight. Especially, too, when it's like Cannoneer just got freed up. It would make more sense even for him to be bumped up to the title fight than Romero. But... I know Izzy really wanted it, so I guess champ's choice, but getting a title shot off a loss when there's somebody else who could be coming off a big win, a couple big wins, it's just... Hello, Holly Holm. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just weird. <laughs> Paid you, Holly Holm. Hold, hold my beer, Holly like, Holm. Yeah, it's just... I don't know. It's like... <laughs> it's There's no... There's no, like, moving weight classes around or something. There's nothing. He's just getting it for nothing. And, I mean, and now I'm just waiting for the news that Henry will be fighting Jose. Because, like, that Aldo-Henry fight is happening, I would think, if this is happening. Because if the champs are just picking which legend they want to fight now, then why wouldn't Henry get that Aldo fight? Especially because it was such, I mean, I guess it was with Romero too. But for me, Romero losses are always controversial, which is weird. Even because even when he clearly loses, they're controversial just because people like him so much. <laughs> to where it's like the Aldo Marlon fight, I feel like that one was a little more controversial. So it's like there's that kind of argument going. But even then, it's like it just doesn't matter. Rankings don't matter. Wins losses don't matter. It's it's sports entertainment. <laughs> Reen, you got to follow this because she just said your two favorite words. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I didn't think this was gonna happen because you know Costa was waiting in the wings and he was sitting there saying like, "Yeah, just wait, you know, I'll be ready to go." But he's not. I don't know what's going on with that. Kind of curious on that too. How did he blow out his shoulder or whatever it was, or was it a muscle, <laughs> a muscle injury? Like, how did he blow that out? Like, what's going on? Um, but yeah, is he called Yoel out? And they've been going back and forth. Was that like a month ago or something? Yeah, the, all the videos. Yoel, those memes. Those yeah. memes. Fucking best. Yeah, Yoel riding with John Jones together. Still scary. Yeah, <laughs> fucking little lions. Like he's sitting there growling. <laughs> the the fucking back and forth was entertaining. So, I mean, it is what it is. It's entertainment. Uh, like, come on, man. He's a, sh- a soldier of God. Why wouldn't he deserve it? Why wouldn't he get that shot? Do Do you think Green? Like a lot of people online think. Cause it, it, okay, I've seen two crazy things that I, I like. Romero. He's definitely an entertaining fighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get he gets he has a lot of fans. But here's two things I don't get with him. And this is the first thing I'm about to say is on a, I think on a very small scale. I don't, I haven't seen many people say this, but there's a lot of people who think that Romero, even without a title is the best middleweight of all time. Yes. Surpassing Anderson Silva. There is that thing that some people throw out there. I've seen that on Twitter. The second thing is that a lot of people, because of like what I just said, the reason that people believe that a lot of people are convinced that he's undefeated in the UFC. What? <laughs> it's more <laughs> Yeah, because he didn't really lose to uh, Whitaker the the first time. Uh, not a lot of people say that, but there's some that do. But a lot of people think he didn't lose the second time. Yeah. And then most people don't think he lost to Costa. So it's like, yeah, he's basically undefeated. Crazy, man. <laughs> I, I got to think they're all Nick Diaz fans or something where they just don't accept <laughs> losses. They're just like, fuck him. He didn't really beat him, so fuck him. Nah. <laughs> 
It would make sense. MMA fans are the worst. Yeah. That's about the worst. Fucking bro science and shit. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you think about this one, he didn't really lose. So, and he won that guy, so he's better than that. Yeah, that's... Yeah, but that's the thing that I see with him. I was like, dude, he's he's a great fighter. Don't get me wrong. And he is one of the best middleweights out there, especially given his uh, accomplishments and his age and his abilities. But, yeah, I mean, I, he's not better than Anderson Silva, man. He's just not. Oh, hell no. And no. I don't even – I'm not even the biggest Anderson Silva fan. I think anyone that's listening to the show kind of knows that. But I definitely will give him that credit that he's the best middleweight of all time because, yeah, like I said – a few times on the show, setting records, you know, defending your title multiple times actually used to mean something. Mm-hmm. And he did it when it really meant something, too, before all this super fight and bouncing around everywhere. Yeah, and this is, I mean, it really is. I think this fight this weekend is kind of showing it with Connor and Cowboy. I, I don't, like I said, I don't think it's a bad fight, Connor and Cowboy, but it's kind of getting to this level. Like, it's kind of becoming like boxing. It's just put on somewhat entertaining intriguing fights doesn't matter if they're the top contender or not like and and what you were um what we were talking about earlier with Romero and he's getting this off of a loss like it's not the first time it's happened but it's the first time in a while the the fact that they were just giving people uh title shots off losses like think of guys like Jorge Masvidal I mean this is the whole reason why he's like this right now he became an animal because he was tired of getting handed these shitty decisions. The, I still think his fight with Ally Quinta is one of the worst robberies I've seen in my life. I genuinely think that. I remember when it happened, some people were like, oh, but he didn't do much, and oh, I can see why he lost. I do not see in any which way how he lost to Ally Quinta. And I think he lost his following fight, which was also really close. He ended up losing like two or three fights in a row, even though they were super close. And people were kind of calling him a bum and a journeyman, like, oh, he can't really win. But they were super, super close competitive fights. And it really fucked them up in his career at that time. But now we're just giving shots to Romero. And as you alluded to, Ashley, yeah, probably Aldo. Just because they're legends. Like, come on, man. That's fucked up. But I, I did not think an Adesanya versus Romero uh, a fight announcement would end up on a down note. But I guess it did because the UFC is what it is. But... Uh, let's take a break from UFC real quick. Uh, there's one Bellator fight that I wanted to mention. Uh, at Bellator 239, happening February 21st, uh, a girl I really like, Denise Kelholtz, former Glory kickboxing champion, is going to fight Christina Williams. Uh, if you guys don't know who Christina Williams is, she is the one that head kicked Heather Hardy and broke her fucking face. Um, oh, yeah, so this is going to be an interesting fight. And uh, I kind of leave that one there. And any thoughts? Go ahead. Because I'm a Bellator casual. Um, this is the. Are these the two hot girls? Denise is very hot. At least I think so. But I don't think. I don't think she gets her due credit. Yeah. The yeah. The. I think she's Dutch. Yeah. Yeah. She's hot. And then Christina Williams. My yeah. announcement, and I was like, oh, I'll tune in for those two. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I, Dude. <laughs> MMA Twitter was reacting the same way when this was announced. That's well, that's good because it's not just a fight. This isn't like uh, Paige Van Zandt and Rachel Ostovich where you're only tuning in for the looks because these girls can fucking fight, man. They can fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this one's gonna be interesting. What about you, Irene? What, what was your thought aside from the obvious? <laughs> Probably won't watch it, but. Yeah, good for her. She's always fighting, man. Yeah, and she she's um she this is without a doubt her toughest test in in MMA because Christina Williams is no joke and mm-hmm. her um Denise's ground game has been getting better as we've been seeing in her in her recent fights, but uh Christina Williams is a very good striker herself, so if this plays out on the feet, this should be really really interesting. So yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be watching this one for sure. Uh, next up, uh, uh, another headlining fight that was recently announced. Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee is coming back, and he is fighting Charles Oliveira. And I think this is like only the second time that Charles Oliveira has headlined the UFC card. So, yeah, it's going to be on UFC Brasilia March 14th. Kevin Lee obviously coming off that spectacular head kick KO of Gregor Gillespie, and Charles Oliveira also coming off a, a nice KO, although I forget the guy's name. But... This this should just be fireworks. Um, 
what do you what do you girls think about just the matchup though as far as is Kevin Lee taking a step back here or does this fight like make all the sense in the world I think it makes perfect I'm surprised I didn't really think of it happening before because Charles has needed a step up and Mm -hmm. Kevin's really just getting back into it he was on a big lull and then he got of course his big knockout um and I think a lot of people are kind of sleeping on Oliveira because it's like he's lower ranked, but he is on a huge roll right now. And it's like, obviously, he's a submission guy, but his hands are getting better, too. So I think it's going to be a slobber knocker. I'm really excited for that one. It's a really good matchup, I think. What about you, Irene? I mean, it seems like for Kevin, it, it is a step backwards. Because, I mean, Oliveira, is, he's a fucking dangerous fighter, so. But for Oliveira, it's like, finally. But but that's what we were saying with Gillespie, too. Remember, like, why would he take this fight? Yeah. He's a lower-ranked guy, but he's super dangerous. And that's, like, exactly what we're saying now. Yeah. But finally, like, Charles Oliveira gets, like, get a crack at, like, the top ten. After all this work, finally, so. Yeah, he seems to he seems to fight everybody and then barely gets any like yeah any like any top ten matchups. Usually it's because he loses to the top ten guys, but still, I mean he's he's still a very exciting and very dangerous fighter. So yeah, you you can't sleep on this kid. Yeah, and even if he did win though, yeah, he'll probably be like ranked eight or something like that. But mm-hmm. I mean, lightweight is just so congested at the top. I think just in general, I mean, there's so many killers in that division. Like, on any given night, anyone can lose. That's why I'm, like, although I don't like to give Khabib too much credit just because of a personal thing, I, mm-hmm. I cannot overlook the fact that, yeah, I mean, yeah, he he hasn't had the best record in the UFC as far as, like, the names that he's fought, but he, obviously he's undefeated, and um, he's undefeated at lightweight, and that, that shit does not happen, man. That shit does not happen at the highest levels, and he is. He's undefeated at lightweight and he's a champ, so I, I will I will always respect him for that because it's amazing. But I do think that the Tony Ferguson has his number. But again, it's always knock on wood because I'll be back in April. Gotta, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, thank you, Ash. Thank you because <laughs> yeah, we we were gonna need some man. I don't even know if we'll talk about other fights. We might just do that its own episode just on that. It's so just ridiculous. For an hour over that fight. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> All so the ins and outs. I wear my papaka. <laughs> You'll be able to see it, but the spirit That's, will. It, yeah, exactly. The spirit. Um, another fight. Neil Magny's coming off of what? A year and a half, two year layoff. Finally. Uh, yeah, and he's gonna fight Li Jinglang. So they're not doing him any favors. That's happening at 248. That is a uh, again the Adesanya Romero card as we just announced. Um, I mean, what can we say about Neil Magny at this point? I mean, is he is he that top guy? Is he, especially with his layoff and the side of stuff, is he gonna come back to uh to form? I don't know, man. He's been one of those two. Win one, lose one. Win one, lose one. But he's still got pretty impressive names on his. I mean, remember he beat Kelvin Gaston when he was looking pretty unstoppable. I mean, Carlos, too. Car- Carlos was, yeah, obviously slipping, but it was still <laughs> still an impressive performance. I- I'll give him that. I was impressed in that one. I'm like, man, he just, he just outclassed him. He did beat Hendrix, but Johnny was going out the door, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, he did. He did, yeah. So yeah. those were all impressive, man, because, I mean, he even had, like, the fight against KG. He won that one. Hector, Lombard, like, I don't know, something happened. And I understand it's a long way back. Like, I don't think the KO is going to affect him too much, but he still mm-hmm. is coming off of a terrible KO loss to Ponzinibbio. Yeah. It is a long time ago. Like, you got to wonder how that's going to affect his confidence. Well, and that's like, I would think the biggest, the most obvious way he could lose in this next fight, too. Oh, Jing Lang's power? Yeah. Yeah. So then there's that problem. Yeah. Again, did not do him any favors, but yeah, let's see how this works out. This is going to be, I think this is for sure going to be an interesting matchup. And 
it, it should play out. It should be pretty exciting too. I, I really do think that. Uh, Rain, I'll start with you on this one. I'm sure you're. Uh, I don't know how much you've been catching up with them, but Demetrius Johnson is finally going to fight for a belt. He's going to fight Adriano Morais, the one champion, the one flyweight champion. Uh, I thought he was the champion when he won that tournament, but apparently that was just its own thing. I guess now yeah. he's the actual champ. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I, I I guess this guy had lost his belt and just regained it. That's about all I know of him. Okay. I, I mean, does anyone <laughs> expect Demetrius I, to this fight? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <Hell> no. <laughs> I I just I just I had to put this in because I was like, you know what? No one's giving, no one's really talking about Demetrius Johnson anymore. And Ben fucking Askren just retired, and we're still talking about him, man. <laughs> Fuck up. Yeah. We need to do our due diligence to seek him out. Yeah, his opponent, like, I don't know who he's fought. I'm like, look at all these names. I can't even fucking pronounce them. But they're all big motherfuckers. I do know that because they yes. weigh like 50 pounds more than him, clearly. <laughs> oh, that's right. So I'm That's a little afraid of with a couple of those when he was going up in the tournament, just seeing them yeah. like next to each other and he looks so small. But it's mighty awesome. He'll get it done. Yeah. Five eight yeah. versus five three. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh my god, this Morais guy is five eight? Yeah. Holy fuck. That's so forgetting. Damn. Yeah. This man, that's so tough for him, but somehow he always gets it done. I mean he like, proved it with that tournament. His uh, his opponent in the final of that tournament was. I was a little more nervous for him than I am this guy, but mm. I'm also a one casual, so I might just be talking out of my <laughs> out of my butt here. But <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling good for DJ. Yeah, Shit, he he fights Bantamweight originally. This guy, crazy well, man. The Brazilian dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I would not be surprised because that's a big dude. That's five eight. Yeah, that's like, I think that's getting into a, what's his name, uh, Sanhagen territory. How big he is. Uh, last fight matchups. Uh, we <laughs> we were talking about this girl off air. Juliana Pena is coming back after a <laughs> decision win of Nico Montano, and she's gonna fight Aspen Ladd. This is a. An interesting fight. I, I don't know. I, I it's weird because it, it's appropriate, I think, but at the same time, like Juliana Payne just came back, and Aspen Lad, there's still like a top contender. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it's too much for Pena or too much for Lad at this point. It's like it's like oh, we don't trust you yet. We do not trust you, girl. Not oh, yet. Oh, Lad, yeah. 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 Yep. You're still and young. Then, yeah. we'll see. And Pena is still, she might be one of the few girls in the division that can compete with Ladd as far as power goes, like weight and power, because that's a big, strong girl. Ladd, I don't think, is going to have an easy time just muscling her and throwing her around. And they fight, I feel like they fight kind of similar. They're both a little reckless. They're both a little wild. I think it'll be a really fun fight, and it'll say a lot. Whoever wins, I think it'll be a nice way to see where they're at. I mean, it might be a nice way to see where the loser's at, too. But I'm excited for that one. I think it's a pretty good matchup. Good point. And I'm, I'm still wondering if Aspen Ladd is going to keep yelping with her ground and pound. That's that's one of the most fascinating aspects of her fight. It's like she, she straight up yelps when she hits people on the floor. I've never seen that. <laughs> even even Holly Holm is surprised by her, her key eyeing and shit. <laughs> Isn't it funny, though, how... With Holly's like kicking noise, people like get so mad at it. But when Aspen Lad's screaming on the floor, everyone's like, "She's so cute." <laughs> like, it's so weird. <laughs> it's because I don't know. It's because she's young, and they just think that I don't know. It's like a phase. Like, it's just a phase. She'll grow out she of it. That, she has that voice too. I guess it's just yeah. A voice. Yeah, we've we've talked about Lad on at, at length on the show. She's a she's an odd one. I'm fascinated by her, but like for all the wrong reasons. But uh, yeah, that that does it for matchups, and that does it for MMA. So we're about to end this, and as always, we're gonna end this with our new story of the week. And the headline is: Kansas man requests trial by combat with swords 
to settle custody battle with ex-wife. So um, I don't really know what more to say when you read a headline like that. Obviously, this guy's bad shit crazy. But at the same time, I think people kind of respect him because he's at his wit's end and he's just saying what's on his mind. So, um, Rain, I'm going <laughs> to... Maybe because it's about samurai swords. Maybe I need to go with the Okinawan on this one. <laughs> what's your thoughts on this? I like this guy's style. Custody battles are lanky, you know, lengthy, and they cost a lot of money. So I do like that he's going all, like, medieval. I don't think his kids, I don't know how many kids are involved here, but I don't think his kids would be happy, <laughs> you know? Dad wants to fucking cut off mom's fucking arm off and shit. Um but yeah, I, I actually got a chuckle off of this because, I, I mean, I even thought that, like, I just want to, you know, fight this dude for my kid <laughs> instead of going to court all the time. Like, this is so ridiculous, the amount of money I spent going to court. Like, I used to joke that the courthouse was my second home because I've been there so many mm-hmm. fucking times. So I kind of feel for this guy. But at the yeah. same time, it's like, dude, what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> That it has to go to this length, right? That the judge even has to like think about it and then respond to this motion. They they didn't immediately call the bailiff and like get his fucking ass out of here. You know, they're like, We understand you, but it can't be done. Yeah, they handled it like an actual case. They didn't like immediately throw it out or anything. They're actually looking at this case and they're gonna judge off of it. I mean if you're a judge and that happens, you have to consider it, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You have to look at all <laughs> angles, all sides. <laughs> like, I would. I'd probably allow it to be honest. Why not? <laughs> How many times does this happen? You know, like you gotta. It, it's gotta be so. Obviously, it's. I'm assuming it's pretty stressful to be a judge. I wouldn't know, but when some shit like this falls on your lap, like man, you you gotta entertain it a little bit, just. Just for, uh, you know, just to break up the monotony a little bit. Like, well, and, you know, he goes home to his wife. Like, well, guess what happened today, honey? Some guy wanted to sword fight with his ex-wife or over his kid. You're not going to hear that shit every day. It's, I, you know, it's funny because I, I, I find these stories and it's uh, usually to bring some levity and find some humor in some weird fucked up situations and, that's exactly what I thought when I read this. And, you know, Irene, I got to be honest, I, I hadn't even thought about your connection with this. Like, I almost forgot about that. And, then, man, I that's crazy. I, I'm I'm actually glad that, that I we did pick it and that you did voice your opinion on this one because, uh, you know, I don't have kids. I'm not married. And all I'll say is this. I definitely can see your point. And, and this is going to sound so lame because I'm so not an adult. But I saw I saw that movie. I don't know if you guys have ca- caught it on Netflix. That uh, marriage story movie, which is about a couple going through divorce. And as soon as I saw that movie, I'm like, "Fuck that shit! I'd murder somebody. I would <laughs> fucking murder somebody." So yeah, I I get you, I I get you because if that's what it's like, everyone yeah. would be saying. You know, like I said, we're all thinking this, but this guy actually said it. Yeah, I mean, if you had like those cases where. You guys all have an agreement. Wonderful. But if you're there, what, six to eight months every fucking year, like around the clock, it's not fun. It's stressful. You uh-huh. have to have like somebody else, you know, make the decision on what's best for your kid or kids. So, yeah, man, I can, I see where this guy is coming from. One thing where I think this guy really failed, though, is that he asked the judge for 12 weeks. Yeah. To get swords. <laughs> this <Yeah>. guy didn't... <laughs> man, he's so thorough, man. He had it all planned out. Yeah, but I think you would get samurai swords quicker than 12 weeks. Well, Wait, man, up though. He should have just, like, picked some dull swords from somewhere. <laughs> like, get it done quickly. But he's like, oh, I'm trying to get a fancy sword where you can kill her really fast. <laughs> like, you need to, go to bring it down a couple notches. <laughs> He's going to go to Hattori Hanzo like Uma Thurman and Kill Bill. He's going to sleep out there for a month. Here's my finest sword yet. It's probably exactly what he was basing his thought process off of. Thinks the dude's a real guy. 
Yeah, who knows? Maybe he's trying to contact somebody back in the homeland. That's I mean, Okinawa is known for the swords. Seriously, like twelve weeks. Yeah. He wants that shit that cuts paper like like mm-hmm. nothing. <laughs> uh, a for effort, I guess, right? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. He's white, right? Yep, Kansas. Yeah, he's white, but hey. <laughs> I had to like, I had to go there, man. man. He's creative, man. Give him props. Fucking white. He's probably a psycho, but man, the dude's the dude's creative. (laughs) At least he didn't go and get his fucking shotgun, you know. Fucking. And just the government itself, like, just like, don't get it twisted. All this shit, you know, they're making money too. It's a business. Oh fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, and that's I think the thing with um. Well, I guess Ash and I can probably speak to this since we're of a similar age. I think that's why people our age aren't really getting married because we found the shit out real young. We're like one of the first generations to find out like, oh shit, this is a scam, ain't it? It's wild, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. It you get wild. married like within a couple hours, get all your papers and shit. But the divorce. You get divorced? Yeah. Months. Years. Six months. Yeah, decades. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It is weird it takes that long. It takes it costs a lot more money too. Mhm. Which is weird. It's fucking wild, man. Yeah, man. It's like, hey, you're miserable. Wait till you're more miserable. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, you didn't like cross the T out. You didn't sign this document. Go back. Come back again. Mm-hmm. Take another fucking number. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like seriously. It's like it's it's like the DMV. If yeah. not worse. If not yeah. worse, because you're at the fucking courthouse. Your family and love life is just some bureaucratic, you know, bullshit. Just some like, yeah. Yeah. Just paperwork and yeah, exactly. Pick a number, keep your ass in line. Yep. Ridiculous. Yeah, you know, the clerk person is like unhappy and shit, doesn't like her job, doesn't, you know, he doesn't like his job or whatever. It's fucking mad. I get like, oh, fuck, man, I gotta smoke. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> About to have a panic attack. Oh man, totally get it. I've never been there, but I totally get it. So props to this guy, I guess, for the creativity. So uh, <laughs> I'll at least give him that. So that's why you're the new story of the week. But um, so funny. We're, we're gonna call it a night. So um, first and foremost, Ash, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, and yes, Tony Ferguson, Khabib. If we're making plans, I, I will I will start jotting that on the calendar, and um, let, let's try and do that. Thank you for coming like, on. Yes. Already. Jeez. We all <laughs> gotta have sage that hurts. night. If if we're gonna do like a podcast, we're gonna have to burn sage and shit. Burn incense and shit. And... <laughs> Make sure, yeah. Have our crystals out. <laughs> yeah. Well whatever whatever cultural thing you do, we need to do it all. Yep. <laughs> so, um thank you, Ash, for coming on. Go yeah, ahead and pl- plug your stuff. Yeah, plug your stuff, do what you gotta do. I am back from hiatus this week, so there is a new episode up, episode 60, the MMA Nerd Podcast. You can head to my website, www.themmanerd.net, and there are links to all the places you can listen, all my social media. I'm mostly on Twitter, but I dabble in the Instagram, Facebook world too. So just head to the site, and you can find all the things. Uh, Reen, we're going to find you at... Box with you on Instagram and Twitter. And um, yeah, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Juice underscore MMA, although I'm rarely on Instagram. I'm not going to say this new year, new me bullshit, but I've been taking a break from the writing, as I've said on the show, for uh, some personal reasons. So um, I really want to start back up and I hope by the end of the month I will get something going. So keep your, keep your eyes out for that. I'll be tweeting all that as it comes out. So um, once again, thank you, girls. And uh, we'll catch you all next week. Later. See you.